What is going on beautiful people? We are back for day two of Peak Week on the March and Performance Programme Online. Lower body yesterday, as you should know if you watch the video. Uh, we are moving on to some upper body stuff today. I'm on route, got about 15 minutes left of the journey. Then gonna get warmed up, then gonna do some primers. Then gonna knock it out the park. So yesterday on the warming section of the warm up, the kind of the generic cardio bit, we did two minutes on the curve runner, two minutes on the assault bike, and we did that back to back twice. So eight minutes total. Uh, gonna kind of follow the same regime today, but I'm gonna use the rower and then the ski erg. I have no idea whether or not the rower is in that direction and the ski erg is over there, but you can kind of see them in the background. Uh, ski erg is kind of the best piece of cardio kit in my opinion for anything upper body, because it's a little bit more upper body based than the bike erg would be. Warms up the lats, warms up the triceps. So uh, let's get cracking with that, shall we? Definitely feeling warmer now, guys, after my eight minute warm up. As always, I'm gonna do a few statics just because it helps me feel looser. And then I'm gonna do some sprint drills. Again, things like lunges, a little bit of hammy and hip work, and some quick high knees. Might sound a little bit weird, maybe a bit counterintuitive or a waste of time for an upper body session, but 100% for me, in my experience, it just gets my central nervous system firing. It is non-discriminate of part of the body. So just do something quick, and I just feel stronger, more powerful, more explosive which hopefully is gonna help me in the heavy incline bench to come. Drills in the bag. It's a tick for that again. Just said it, but I say it again. Even though it is upper body, I find it incredibly beneficial to do this stuff. Just gets me feeling nice and loose. Think even when you're doing high knees, there's no better way to kind of mobilize and really stretch the tissues out and the connective tissues and the musculature around your shoulders and around your pecs than doing some really, really quick arm swings. I just think moving from A to B nice and quickly and the mechanics of how to do so properly that is pretty much the foundation of all movements. That is something I've been fairly outspoken about in my business, in my kind of Atlas Fitness Conditioning, Athletic Development Club specifically. My approach to functional fitness, we spend a lot more time 
as an example, teaching movement mechanics and sprint mechanics and teaching people how to sprint properly. Much more time on that than teaching people how to handstand walk. Might be specific to CrossFit as an example, but I think learning to run properly is probably a more transferable skill in life. But that's just my opinion. I don't know, I'm not here to offend anyone. Love you all. So moving back downstairs, now that the warm up is done, back down to the heavy weighted area. Uh, today's, kind of today's main movement is incline bench press. That's the, the move that we've been working on in this kind of four, five week cycle. But before we do that, actually, and this is one of the reasons I am a fan of this particular session and the way the March and Boys uh, program everything, is before we get onto the incline bench press, we actually do some wave loaded pull ups, or not specific, I'm not a massive specific fan of exactly that, but basically any kind of row or pull movement before a heavy push, in my opinion, especially a horizontal push, just works the lats, works the traps, and basically I find my push movements and my strength kind of capacity actually goes up after a pull lever exercise, like a weighted pull up as an example, basically, because the lats are active and everything is pulled in the shoulder girdle into the right position. So I find, as opposed to kind of feeling of having a really, really loose shoulder, if you go straight into the push, if heavy push is the goal, do a heavy pull first, not enough to completely wipe you, but just enough to kind of to prime. And uh, you may well see those push movements and those numbers go up. And a wee bit of prehab stuff that really helps me. That I always do is kind of a staple part of my warm up for any upper body session. I do some band pulls. So I do eight palms down, keeping the arms nice and straight, squeezing the shoulder blades into the back. Now you've got five pound notes. You don't want it to fly away. I'm talking to the flipping camera. I forgot how many I've done. What are you doing to me? And then eight palms up, which works the back in a slightly different way. Turns off some of the bigger muscle groups. Palms up is harder. But sometimes, that is a good thing. Again, you don't want to pinch the mid back, so keep that bottom rib down, keep everything nice and neutral. Once you're an eight of each, overhead, and from there, one of the things I do is I do 10 band pulls, again, making sure the mid back doesn't pinch, so most of the torso and the trunk is kept nice and neutral. And then from there, I don't know if that's 10 or not, what you are gonna do, is I basically just kind of wrap it around one arm, push that arm up, and now this, my right arm, that I'm waggling and waving to you with, is being pulled back, and it's just such a nice way to kind of stretch the pec out again. Not enough that you would weaken it before any big heavy lifts today, but just enough, kind of might break down a little bit of, little bit of scar tissue and just start articulating, especially when you do these little ballistic variations. So I kind of hold it for a couple of seconds, but keep it moving. And that's what really starts to kind of articulate the joint. I find it just helps my posture. And afterwards you do just feel a little bit looser and a little bit taller, which considering I'm five, nine and a half, don't fucking forget that half, feeling a little bit taller is a nice stroke to my ego. Wave loading today on the pull-ups, beautiful people. So what we are gonna do, I believe, probably should have looked at the program before this, uh, three reps, three singles with ascending weight, and that is one set, and we're gonna do four effectively load. So the wave is one rep at body weight, one rep with more weight, and then a third rep even heavier. So my pull-ups are actually okay. They're one of kind of my stronger movements. So one pull-up, I'll probably do um, my second rep of the wave, and again, there's no real break in this, just enough to drop down and kind of load up a weight belt if that's what you're using. So do rep one at body weight, rep two about 25, and then rep three about 34, because I think that's the heaviest dumbbell we've got, because I'm in the gym now, but all the members of this beautiful facility have taken the kit home. So that's probably what I'll do. 90 second break, and we're gonna do that four times. Got my country music on, not sure if you can hear that. I'm holding my earbuds. ESC, best earbuds I've ever had in my flipping life, by the way. Up to the microphone, country music in, round one of the pull-up wave. Let's go! So that's set one done, guys of wave one, I should say, again, just singles, but this is peak week. We would not go this heavy. Well, no one should go. No one should be doing heavy singles too often. But what I'm gonna do, my own kind of personal taking it, I don't know whether or not the marching guys kind of programmed it this way, but I did some overhand. I'm now gonna do neutral grip for the second wave. 
underhand for the third and probably neutral again for the fourth. I personally think neutral is much better for my posture, much better for my back, builds the lats in the right way as opposed to rotating too much for, uh, for overhand grip. So about another 60 seconds and then onto neutral. Set two done. Moving on to set three. Back to the rig. I swear the hardest part of this is moving the flipping weights around everywhere. 60 to 90 seconds between waves. And then on to underhand. Another 90 seconds, you guessed it, back to neutral to finish it off. Just the first round, pull up, wave load, three reps per wave, four waves, short break between, which I think is about right. With this, I don't think, I think for something like a pull up, after about 90 seconds rest, I don't know if going to three minutes recovery would do me any better. I don't know whether I'd feel any better, I'd just probably get a little bit colder. Now moving on to uh, kind of the main lift of the day. Now moving on to the main lift of the day, we're doing some incline bench. Same kind of rep structure as yesterday on the squats, actually 6644. Again, if you watch the video that I posted for the lower body bias session, I was not particularly happy with my squats, but feeling a million times better today, back's feeling better, everything. Just feeling in myself a little bit stronger and a little bit more with it. My jokes might be a little bit less shit, so you can benefit from this extra energy that I've got. 6644 again for incline bench. Let's get it set up. Set one, incline bench, six reps on a hundred. Feels okay, it's fucking heavier than it should, I don't know why. I don't know why. I know I literally said this in yesterday's squat session, I said I was feeling better, and I am feeling a bit better today, but I don't know. Maybe my periodization's just been slightly wrong. We are on peak week, uh, kind of at the end of a long cycle. I think they said we're at the end, actually, of a 12-week block, and they change it every four weeks which might mean that it's kind of programmed to be deload next week and I'm just suffering a little bit in this last last couple of days, but you know, I was hoping for, I don't know, well, only, I was actually only hoping for 105. Should we go for 105? What am I doing? Why am I doubting myself? Let's fucking go for 105, come on. Now, if you're currently on YouTube watching this video, then you know that I probably didn't die. So unfortunately, uh, the anticipation of hopefully seeing a horrendous gym fail is gone. But you know, I want you guys to be gunning for me, rooting for me, you're my team member. Right, so 105 now. Incline bench for six, let's get it done. That's pissed me off. That has. That's pissed me off a lot. Five. But hips just being thrown up. I knew I wasn't gonna get six unbroken. But that's real life, isn't it? 
Perseverance. Fail forward. Right, let's go for a new view for absolutely no reason. I'm in a really weird phase at the moment where, for some reason, instead of having too much stimulation in a session, or with changing levels of stimulation, I kind of like to keep it the same. What I'm talking about is my music. So instead of like putting it on a playlist, I find one song that seems to have a beat that I'm kind of vibing with that day. <laughs> I just put it on repeat, and it plays like, I don't know, 20 times or something, and then that's the whole session done. But it's weird, you just stop thinking about it, and the beat kind of keeps you going through, and I find if I put on a playlist, the change of track every three and a half minutes, it, like, it pulls me out of focus, it kind of breaks my, my flow, breaks my present moment engagement with the session, it kind of pulls me out of that mindset and gets me thinking about the music instead of thinking about the lifts. Does anybody else do that? Please put it down in the comment section below. Probably not, it might be unique to me, but if it is, ain't nothing wrong with that. Let's bring it home with a little bit of a change of view from the shadows, heavy bench in an empty gym, listening to great showmen. The fuck has happened to me? Funny, ma'am. So, again, as I just said, I'm not feeling too strong. I feel right in and of myself. It just, you know, don't know, a couple of kilos away from where I would have liked, and the kind of shape that I know I'm in at the moment, which is why I'm just surprised about the last couple of days. But even though uh, I'm still not exactly feeling on top form, upper body, man, today it just doesn't wipe me anywhere near as much as lower body. And I know it's probably the kind of the same for you guys, but even if rep scheme is the same, reps, well rest was allegedly the same. Just, I just seem to have to extend rest times in lower body sessions, I don't know why. I just don't know, I don't think my lactic tolerance is maybe a little bit rubbish, but I just, I always have to stretch that out, stay gassed for longer. But with National Fitness Games coming up, it's good to be doing this program, because it's a program that I know that I'm not consciously or, su or kind of subconsciously programming to stay comfortable around my own strengths and that's one of the reasons why uh, I'm going with the, the March and performance program now. I mean, I'm a, I'm a PT myself, but I just, I think that it is an incredible asset to leverage a different program, get put in a different community when you do that for so many other people. It just, it helps me a lot, kind of pulls me out of my own head and prevents decision fatigue. And again, considering I've got competition coming up, I want a program that's completely impartial. Whereas I know, even if I tried to make it objective, but if I wrote it myself, it wouldn't be completely objective. So that's one of the benefits of doing this. If you're watching this now and you are a personal trainer, not specifically endorsing this program, and I'm speaking in generalities, go get somebody else to control what you do if you feel as though you're just in your own head all the time and programming for yourself is just too much work. That's how I felt for flipping ages. And it's just such a nice kind of breath of fresh air uh, to go onto an app and see what I'm doing for the day, it's game changing. Wave load pull-ups done, incline bench press done, pull-ups went well, uh, incline bench was, it was okay, it was okay. Position didn't feel particularly strong. Um, I don't know, I don't know, who knows? Again, that is flipping real life and I'm not gonna bullshit or overly censor or edit when I'm documenting when the purpose of this video, kind of in all seriousness, is to document my journey to the National Fitness Games with the marching performance program uh, kind of as my main training vehicle. Uh, some days you have good days, some days you have bad days. The days, the week that I start rolling the camera and effectively showing all of you guys how the program's going, if it's not going too well, I have to be honest and exercise and demonstrate integrity and be honest about that. But, serious talk over, it's too heavy for the shit. 
Eight minute EMOM, minute one, five to eight handstand push-ups. Uh, I have a broken bone in my wrist that never healed. This is basically why I'm not a crossfitter. I broke my scaphoid and it's something called non-union, which basically means it never healed, so it's still broken. I then broke it again doing a clean, attempting to get into CrossFit about four years ago, and one bone went into another and shattered it. So again, I probably would be, I, I have no doubt that I would be uh, attempting to be a fairly competitive CrossFitter if I was fit and healthy, but it is because of this particular injury. I can't really do cleans, can't do any Olympic lifting, and I definitely can't, I can't do press-ups, basically. I have to do them on my knuckles. So I'm not gonna do handstand press-ups. With that, what I'm gonna do is just do some, uh, some overhead press with some dumbbells to kind of replicate the movement. And then 12 hang power cleans. I'm gonna keep it at 60 for the first round, but hopefully I should have enough time. Got my fives at the ready to whack it up to 70 or 80. Hang power cleans, I've got a little bit of snap from the hips with the kind of sprinting uh, and bobsleigh. So fingers crossed, that's gonna be, I just broke my phone. That's gonna be a fairly good one for me. Uh, eight minute EMOM, let's crack on. That's good actually. Uh, I quite enjoyed that really, Mum. Just enough rest. It's such, they're such bloody good vehicle, Emoms generally, to not only kind of get your working capacity up, but especially if you're doing a functional fitness competition in a team or a pair, one of the biggest dictators of success for that, in my opinion, is recovery time. So if you can find a way to get your body to adapt to that particular principle, quicker recovery, so even if your work capacity stays the same, instead of you know taking 90 seconds to recover before you're able to have some decent output again, if you can drop that down to 60 or 30 seconds, well that's game changing, especially in a team event, because you're ready to be tagged back in fairly quick. So yeah, good tool, always good. Kind of that perfect balance, that perfect hybrid. So you can get a little bit of a muscular pump. Uh, and still working a bit of capacity stuff as well. Good work, lads, from Marchand. And now we are on to the next section of the upper body session. Ooh, wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. Uh, and we're doing an arm wrap. So we've got 100 kilos on the bench. We've got a little easy bar for some biceps. And over there. So we're gonna do five reps on bench, 10 reps on what would have been um, hammer curls. We don't have any appropriate dumbbells. Uh, I'm not strong enough to be doing uh, that in a kind of a cardio style workout. So five reps on bench, 10 reps on bicep curls, and then 15 lat raises on the cable crossover. So as many rounds of that as possible in eight minutes, I reckon I could get four, I reckon I could get, you know, all three of those done in a two minute period. Let's find out.
So that's it boys and girls, that's that section of the session left. Session left. Can't even flip and think or speak straight. That's that part of the session done. Uh, with that a little minute arm wrap. I think we've got something else. I think we've got a little party finisher. Uh, let me have a look. Indeed we do guys. So that's a little EMOM done, that's a little arm wrap done. Now the functional pump uh, that the boys have programmed for us. It's four rounds of 12, fuck me, 12 to boost the bar, uh, 12 strict dips, and then four rounds of eight supinated grip pull up, 16 push ups, and 200 meter ski. So the first bit, the toast the bar, and the strict dips, we've only got one kind of dip station, so we'll stay down here for that, and then we'll head back upstairs for the pull ups, push ups, so American, uh, and the 200 meter ski. First section of the functional pump done. We are now heading upstairs for part two, as if by magic. So, we're moving on to some pull-ups, some push-ups, and a little cheeky finisher on the ski. 